We are taking a little break from our current sermon series to bring you this special children's production. Our kindergarten through fifth grade Sunday school classes would like to welcome you to their presentation of Christmas Letters, directed by our children's director, Angie Knotts. Pastor Terry will then have a short sermon which will follow the play. Let's join them now. Will you guys please welcome the Angie Knotts and the children from Faith Outreach Center. Good morning, everyone. Oh, photo session down here. Um, welcome to the third annual Kids Christmas program that we have ready for you. <laughs> it could be interesting. Um, so this is our third annual play. This year, the play is called Christmas Letters, and it's a short story about um, a mom and some kids who received a letter from grandma and um, in the discussion, they decide to talk about what it would be like if they could have written letters to the Bible characters back um, on the day that baby Jesus was being born. So throughout the morning, you're going to see um, some of the kids coming down who have written a letter to maybe Mary or Joseph or a shepherd. And then you'll see the, um, the response that the Bible characters have. Um, but before we get started on the Christmas program, the kids have um, picked out their favorite so Christmas song of the season. I really don't know where to stand because of all the videos. Um, <laughs> they have picked out their favorite song of the season, and they want to do a little special kickoff for you. So, guys... Put your beard on. Put your beard on. Put your beard on. Come up here. Tighter.
was so much cr fun Christmas caroling with everyone. I was getting so excited to open presents and spend time with our family. Speaking of family, we got a letter from Grandma. Come here and listen. Dear grandchildren, because your grandpa is recovering from a bad case of the flu, we could not be with you this Christmas. But you are always in our minds and hearts, even when miles separate us. Our Christmas gifts to you will arrive in the mail, but the best gift we can give you cannot be delivered by the post office. It is our gift of love to you, just as Christmas celebrates the best gift of all, God's love to us through the birth of Jesus. As you enjoy all the Christmas surprises, always keep God's gifts centered in your heart, for that is the most important and precious gift you will receive. All our love, Grandma and Grandpa. It's nice Grandma let us know why she couldn't come and what Christmas means to her. Letters are great ways to share our news and our thoughts. Hey, we should write a letter to Grandma saying what happened after the holidays. Good idea, you know. What if we could write letters and find out all about the things that happened when Jesus was born? The Bible tells us what happened. But I mean, like how the shepherds felt when the angels sang glory to God in the highest. Hey, we could write a letter to Joseph and Mary and even the baby Jesus. Just imagine. Dear Joseph, the Bible tells us that an angel appeared to you in a dream and told you about Mary, Mary and the baby Jesus. Were you frightened when you saw the angel? How did you feel? Did you wish you did have to go to Bethlehem? <laughs> Love, Ryan. Dear Ryan, after I was engaged to Mary, I learned that she was expecting a baby. I was upset and very surprised. I could not believe this news. I thought I should not marry her. I didn't know the right thing to do. One night, an angel came to me in a dream with a message from God. The angel told me that I should make Mary my wife without being afraid. And yes, I was worried about the trip to Bethlehem. But we had to go and be counted for this, since it's even more importantly, it was prophesied in the Bible that Jesus was, was to be born there. I knew that this journey had to happen according to God's plan. Signed, Joseph. <laughs> Dear Mary, how exciting that you're going to be the mother of Jesus. How did you feel when the angel told you that you were going to be the mother of God's son? Were you worried what people would say you were scared to travel to Bethlehem for the tax before Jesus' birth? Love, Brenna. Dear Brenna, when the angel appeared to me, I was scared, but he quickly told me not to be afraid. 
When I learned that I was to be the mother of God's son, I could not believe it. I was unmarried. I was not a special person. I did not understand why I was chosen. Oh my, yes, it was very hard to travel to Bethlehem. Joseph tried to make the trip easier by placing me on the donkey, but I was very uncomfortable. We were so discouraged when we got to Bethlehem and couldn't find a place to stay. But a kind innkeeper let us use his stable, and that is where Jesus was born. Signed, Mary. What made you decide to let them use your stable? Love, Aiden. Dear Aiden, Bethlehem was a small village, and many, many people came to Bethlehem to register for taxation. We were not to, prepared to house so many travelers to our village. On that night, when I looked at the couple at my door, I knew they must have a place to stay. The baby was to be born soon. I thought clean hay and warmth was better than no place at all. Although, if I had known who was being born, I would have given them my own bed. The stable was not a place for the Son of God to be born. Signed, The Innkeeper. No room in the inn, no bed to be had, not a nook, not a cranny, not an inch to lay your head. Ask who you will, the story's the same. Because of the senses, the king is to blame. It's wall to wall people like you've never seen. The folks in this town are packed in like sardines. Maybe a stable, maybe a stall. We may in a manger or nothing at all. I'm nothing to offer this Bethlehem night. So maybe a stable. holy night king jesus was laid in a manger tonight who would have known who would have guessed a smelly old barn is where jesus would rest i'm not a cruel person but leave me it's true the fact is the same there's no room for you maybe a stable maybe a soul Really, dear Mary, there's no room inside But if you are willing to bunk with a cow Then yes, a room is available now Maybe a stable, maybe a stall Clean hay in a manger or nothing at all I'm nothing to offer this Bethlehem night So maybe a stable, maybe a stall Maybe a 
Dear shepherds, what does a shepherd do? Is it lonely at night on the hillside, on the night that Jesus was born? Did you know something was happening in Bethlehem? Were you afraid of the angels? Love, Connor. Dear Connor, being a shepherd is an important job. Every day we take the sheep to the hills to eat. The day we take the sheep to eat the grass because the villages are too small to grow food for animals. Most of us like our work. At night, we sit and tell stories and sing about God. On the night that Jesus was born, we noticed a special star over Bethlehem, and an angel's voice filled the sky telling us about the miracle in Bethlehem, and we decided to go see for ourselves what the angel had told us. What is it like to be an angel? Do you know God? What do you do in heaven? How did you feel when you appeared to the shepherds? Love, Hunter. Dear Hunter, angels are God's messengers. We appear on earth to tell people important things that God wants to 
that God wants to announce, just as we did to the shepherds the night Jesus was born, or like when we appeared to Joseph and Mary. The night Jesus was born was a special night for all people as well as for angels. We brought the world the wonderful news that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Signed, the angels. Good news, good news, God's son is born tonight. Dear baby Jesus, we know you can't talk or walk yet, but we wonder how you felt when you came to us. Here you are, Annie. So you were surrounded by hay and animals when you should be in a crowd in a palace because you are a king. We thank you, Jesus, for being born and for loving us. Love, Sierra. <laughs> Awesome, awesome job. Angie. Angie Knotts, would you please come back up here and Lisa Brooks? Uh, I would like to introduce to you our uh, children's director. This is Angie Knotts, and uh, this is Lisa Brooks. This is one of her helpers. I just want you to know that um, Angie has around her a huge team of volunteers, and a lot of you guys are the volunteers, and they're out there right now, but... If you guys are, are volunteers as far as the children ministry, would you please just stand up real quick? There's lots more. There's lots more. There's lots more. Go ahead and stand on up. Well, Angie, we, we are very, very grateful for what you do. You do an excellent job here at the way you take care of our kids. As a matter of fact, uh, Lisa here, I've asked her to, actually there's some others that would have come, but they couldn't because they had to work. But I just want you to hear from some mothers. Oh. <laughs> we we want to see her cry. Amen? There's enough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, I know that you as parents know what it's like to um, hear your kids start asking you to spend the night somewhere for the first time. You know, when they're like, I don't know, second, third grade, they're starting to, they're starting in and you're like, oh, wow, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, bud, because I don't know if I know that mom, I don't know if I know, we don't know that dad yet. Well, when um, Jonah and Gabe started asking to spend the night places, they're back there, aren't they cute? Um, <laughs> yeah, they're all grown up, taller than we are, but... They started asking, and this was one of the people that they would come home and talk about all the time. I just love Angie. She's so nice. Mom, she does, yeah. 
especially Gabe. I don't know what it was. I think it was because she let him play in the dirt and go go pick up animals and stuff like we all do. So, so he loved that about their house, and he would come home and just talk, just praise her. And I know from a mother's standpoint that that's what you want to hear when they've been somewhere, you know. And I know Angie. Oh my gosh, I can't say enough good things about her. Um, she she's one of those women that you you just want your kids to be around because she just she, you know that she's a, a person of god and i know that she does her morning worship all the time or her daily devotions yeah. and <laughs> and you can just see that coming out of her you know and she's so great she <laughs> that was mine today and, and, oh well yeah yeah god help me <laughs> but um she's just i I don't even know what else more to say because I just love her and I love that, you know, and I loved when she was at the school too, even with Jude and Tessa, I was like, oh good, Angie's there in case they have to go to the office. Angie's there just in case they need something. And, and Jenny too. <laughs> so I was always happy that these two were in the office to help them over at Columbia. And, I, and now she's here. So I'm just happy that my kids have her here now. Amen. So. Thank you, Angie. Yeah. Thank you. By the way, that just in case was quite often. So anyway, <laughs> send those boys to the office. No. No, in honesty, uh, and being with Angie a lot, I just want you to know, God wakes her up all the time to pray for individuals in this church all the time. And how God just lays people on her heart. And especially your children. And that's one of the things that really drew her to the schools. She, could, she hated the idea of leaving the kids at school, but she loved the idea that she got to spend time with them here at the church. So, Angie, we appreciate you. And we want to, I'd give you this as a token of our appreciation. Love you very much. Love you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I want to pray for you. Would you please stretch forth your hand, dear Heavenly Father? We realize that uh, the church is uh, as good as its uh, young generation, Lord. Without the young generation, the church would die. And so, Lord, teachers are so important. I thank you, Father God, that you've surrounded Angie with such talented, gifted, dedicated, loving parents and teachers, God, that love your children and love our children. So thank you, Father God, for that in this church. And, Lord, we just thank you for Angie and all that she brings to this church and all she brings to our children. We ask, Lord, for your anointing. And blessing upon her in the name of Jesus. And thank you, God. Fill her with your spirit and her family, Lord. We pray protection over their family and their household. And we plead the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus over you for all protection in Jesus' name. And thank you, God, for what you're going to do in the future, in the future of these young lives, Lord, as they hear the truth and they surrender their hearts and lives to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. See ya. Thanks. <clears throat> all right. Thank you. Well, I just want to go ahead. I have something I just want to give you like five minutes, if you would, please indulge me. You know, when you see these little kids and you, uh, you hear the Christmas story, some of you guys have heard the Christmas story 20, 30, 60, 70 times, have we not? And one of the dangers of hearing a story so many times is the fact that all of a sudden we become dull to it. We stop losing the, uh, uh, the wow, the factor of it. Where, when you think about the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, why, how, it all happened when it happened in the history and all that kind of stuff. We're just blown away. But I think one of the ways that we can maybe not be lulled to sleep, lulled to sleep, so to speak, is to maybe take a verse at a time. And I would like to throw up here on the screen, if you would, uh, two scriptures. The first one is this. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. If you guys ever wonder why Bethlehem, you ever wonder why certain things that God says in the story, why he did it a certain way, that's one of the ways you should read the Bible. I mean, you know, the world accuses the church of this. Oh, as soon as you step into the church, you check out your brain. You no longer use your brain. You just use blind faith. Well, Jesus and the Bible and God has never, ever called people to come to him blind faith. He calls us to test him. He calls us to read his word. He calls us to use our brain and all the faculties that we have, all of our senses that we have in determining, is this true? Because the truth will always hold out, will it not? It always will. And so God is not afraid of all these scrutinies. God's word is never afraid of the scrutiny of man. You know, we can lie, we can ma manipulate it, but the truth is this. You will always find the truth in the word of God and it will never fail you. 
And so we look at this and we always should trust God. And here's the next set of scriptures. And by the way, the whole point of that was we do have faith, but it is not blind faith. It is faith because of the evidence that we have seen. It's faith because of the evidence that we have lived in our own lives that that faith grows and grows and grows. That is a, a Christian. That's a Christian that God wants to use. Someone who worships him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen? That's who we are to be. The next uh, scripture I'd like for us to look at, and that's this. This will be a sign to you. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm reading a different version. You will find a babe wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Now, a sign. That's, that's one key word I just want to point in on. Um, suppose a foreigner came to the United States of America. How would they know who the president of the United States was? Well, you can see pictures and that kind of stuff, but maybe they've never seen it. Here's how you can say, well, this is a sign that you can know this is the president when you go down. Go to Washington, D.C., Go to this place where the, where the White House is and stand there and eventually you'll see a man come out of there and he'll be surrounded by a whole bunch of other men in plain clothes and military garb. And then you'll see this man get on the, the special helicopter and fly away. This is a sign to know that that is the president of the United States. And so they can go and they see that and that would be a sign to them. Hey, that's the president. Well, this is how God says, hey, this will be a sign to you. This is how you're gonna know you're gonna find the Messiah, the savior of the world. And God uses some unusual things. Let, 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 says this, you'll be signed unto you. You'll find a, number one, a baby wrapped in clothing, lying in a manger. That's something else. That's something else. Uh, first of all, there's three points I want to pull out of this. I'm just going to make this real quick. Number one, what are those things that we find out about Jesus being a babe, wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger? Remember, we can hear the Christmas story again and again and be lulled to sleep. Let's, let's look at these under a microscope. It's good. One of the things is this. You find that his humanity, his humanity. It says you will find a, what is it, church? A baby. You will find a baby. And I've always wondered this. God could have came down. He could have came down as a man. He could have floated down as full Jesus, all right there and all power and all that kind of stuff. But God in his wisdom and for a purpose that maybe we can't understand, he chose to bring Jesus, number one, as a baby. And one of the things we learn from this is the humanity of Jesus Christ. The humanity of Jesus Christ. We, what we could not do for ourselves, God did through the baby of Jesus Christ. Everything else flows from this truth, everything. If he had been born, um, he had to be born, number one. Jesus had to be born, he had to become a man in order that he could die as a man for our sins, amen? So that he could raise the dead, raise up from the dead as a man. God chose to bring Jesus as a man. And so one of the things that he told the shepherds, and he says, this is the way you're gonna find it because you're gonna find a baby, a baby. The second thing is this. This verse teaches us that he is helpless. He came helpless. It's amazing. It, uh, he was wrapped in cloth, number one. And when, the, when the, they wrapped the babies in cloth, they wrapped them kind of like a mummy so they could not move. Back then, he was lucky to live to the age of one or two. And a lot of babies die. And this is one of the ways that they protected them. They would wrap them in tightly. And now we see a baby Jesus who, number one, hum, humanity, humble, but you also see that he's helpless. You know, it's, it's so awesome. How many of you guys would like to have someone take care of you who's been through the same situation? You, you want to go to someone, you want to talk to them about something. You would like to talk to someone who has experienced the same issues that you have in your life. You know they can empathize with you. You know that they can understand where you're coming from, Amen. It's the same way with Jesus Christ. That's why he came as a baby as well. He came just like you and I. We come and we are helpless. We, we need our parents. We need all these things. So Jesus understands our, our weaknesses. He understands our fears. He understands all the things that you and I go through. Sometimes you may think that God is so far away, he can't feel what you're feeling. It's not true. He came as a babe. And he grew up as a baby. And he encountered dangers. He lost his teeth. You know, he fell down, he had the boo-boos. He had people trying to kill him. So God had Joseph and Mary run to different parts of the world and in Egypt to hide away from these mass murderers who tried to kill him. So Jesus experienced everything that you and I have and he experienced the helplessness that you have experienced also. You know, Jesus was bound as a baby, but later on he was also bound and he was died on the cross that you and I could be set free from our bondages. That's just a little, little tidbit right there. And the third thing is this, his humility. Humility. It says this, you're going to find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. A manger. So many times we see a manger kind of like this scene over here. It's kind of like a little feeding trough, and it could be. I've also read somewhere where they just took stones and they put them in a circle and they would put, fill it with hay and stuff like that right there on the ground. 
I mean, this is, this is the part that's unusual to me. You think you would find a, uh, your shepherds, you come, you think you'd find a baby in, Jesus, in Mary's arms in hell. But for some reason, some reason, so it says, this is how you're going to know this is Jesus. This is going to be a sign. You're going to find him lying in a manger. You're going to find him where animals trod and smell and there's stuff just laying everywhere. It's not unclean. This, that's an unusual thing. And what can we find from that? Philippians 2.7 says this. Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. See, Jesus came to serve. He came to save, but he also came to serve. So many times people think that Jesus came just to rule. He's going to rule. Can I tell you that right now? Jesus Christ is coming back, and he's coming back as king and lord of lords. And all these other things are going to bow before him. But when he first came, he came as a baby, and he grew up, and then he became a servant unto man. And he served us, and he showed us how to serve, showed us how to love people. That's Jesus. Everything he does, we can take an example from. Nothing about the baby Jesus appears supernatural. You guys ever seen those pictures of baby Jesus, you know? It seems like he lights up the room. He's this light bulb. Someone just plugged him in. He just glows. There's Mary's face. Everything's dark behind her, but Mary's face and all the shepherds looking on her, they're all glowing. It wasn't like that. He didn't have the halo. He didn't have all these other things about him that showed that, hey, this has got to be the son of God. It was just very humili- humbling, humbling as a little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Nothing about the outwards pointed to God, towards God. And you may think, well, why would God use all these wild and weird things? Let me give you a couple more scriptures and I'm done. It says this. We cannot tell by looking why God does what he does, but in Romans we can find this. His paths are beyond tracing out. Listen, God does not bow to the dictates and how we think he should do things. So when we pray, we don't say, God, it needs to be done this way, this way. Who's ever prayed that way? Lord, grab a hold of this person. Grab a hold of them this way. Lord, I want you to intervene in my job this way. I want you to take that person, get them fired, and me hired up. You know, you know what I'm saying? We've all prayed those little prayers somehow in some way. But the thing is, God does, uh, God does not bow to our dictates. He has his plans. And to us, they seem like, why would you do it that way? That's so crazy. Why should I turn the other cheek? Why should I pray for my enemies? Why should I bless them? God, this doesn't make sense. God has a purpose in everything that he does, and it's life, and it's not like human. It's all from God, and I think that's one of the reasons why he does it, because our nature wants us to do it one way. His nature is better, and he does it another way. He does it another way. I want to read something to you. Uh, This came from uh, Charles Spurgeon. I'm going to mess it up here. I just kind of wrote it down, but first of all, first of all, the world did not need an educator. Otherwise, God would have sent a teacher. The world didn't need a... uh, uh, dictator or the world didn't need a, a, a soldier otherwise God would have sent a soldier the world did not send a world did not need money otherwise God would have sent a banker amen or he would have sent Chad Garrison with all of his money the world did not here's what the world needed <laughs> I don't know the world needed a savior the world needed a savior so he sent baby Jesus to be our savior you and I need a savior that's why he sent Jesus Here's the thing I want to close with, and Charles Spurgeon says this. Little children should come to Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was just like them. God's calling everyone to him, little children, because Jesus came as a little child. The world should come as young women. You should come to Jesus Christ because Mary came serving Jesus. She came as a mother bearing him and uh, giving birth to him. Men, young men should serve Jesus Christ. Because Joseph, he came and he was bold and he did all the things that God called him to do in raising up this child. Ordinary workers should come to Jesus Christ. Jesus called shepherds. He called them to, to this thing. Ordinary people, workers, working with their hands. Uh, God also calls the, calls the wise. You're wise today. God's calling the wise. Wise men, magi came from afar to bow down to him and to worship him. So God is still calling them today as well. Old men should come and worship Jesus Christ as well because you remember in the story of Simeon, he was one of the priests waiting for the, to see the Messiah and God says, you will not die until you see the Messiah. And what happens when they brought Jesus to the temple to, uh, be a, uh, to, to uh, dedicate him, there was Simeon standing right there and he held the baby. Old men, God is calling us to worship Jesus. Old ladies, God is calling us to worship Jesus as well. And uh, who do we have for that one? We have uh, Anna. Remember, she was a prophetess that was there also. She got to hold the baby as well. God is calling every single person 
It doesn't matter what your background is to worship the God, the one true God. And this will be the sign to you, the Bible says. You'll find a babe wrapped in linen cloth and lying in a manger. Well, God is coming back real soon. He's coming back as king. And so God wants our hearts. He wants us to choose today whom we will serve. We hope you've enjoyed this special presentation. If you would like more information concerning our church, you may go to www.faithoutreach.cc. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, we would like to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and God bless you all.